Hi everyone, I'm Cornelia Lex from Graz University of Technology. Hi, I'm Martin Schaber from Graz University of Technology. Martin, did you see the article about how more and more people are finishing their winter tires in summer? Yes. If the tread depth is lower than allowed in winter conditions, they use the winter tires in summer in order to save money. There's also the reverse case, especially in regions where there are few winter days. There, people want to drive with summer tires all year round. Many people are not aware that it is not only water or snow on the road that affect the force transmission between tire and road. The ambient temperature will have a big influence on the braking distance and cornering behavior of a vehicle. You're right. The rubber compound of summer and winter tires is optimized for other outside temperatures. So, even if the road is clear of snow, summer and winter tires will perform different depending on the ambient temperature. Let's simulate how this would influence the vehicle dynamics. The difference between summer and winter tires is especially noticeable when the vehicle performs an emergency maneuver on wet road and goes to the physical limits of the tire. One such emergency maneuver is the double lane change. The vehicle with the summer tires is shown in opaque and the vehicle with winter tires is shown in transparent. In this scenario, the driver avoids a fictitious obstacle in his lane and steers into the oncoming lane. In order not to risk an accident with oncoming traffic, the driver must immediately steer back again. The road is still wet after a rain shower. The driving area in which the vehicle is allowed to stay is marked with cones. Driving over it would be similar to a collision with an obstacle or other road users. Now we start the simulation. The vehicle with summer tires drives stably through the course and without driving over the cones. With the vehicle with winter tires, you can see that even the first lane change to the opposite lane is more challenging. The driver has to work hard to stay in the driving area. When driving back into its own lane, the vehicle with winter tires can no longer stay in the driving area. Due to the dynamic excitation from the first lane change, it quickly gets into an unstable state and leaves the track. The tire has a major influence on the vehicle's driving dynamics. This is not only the case in the simulation, but also in the real vehicle. But what is the task of tires? Let us ask our colleagues Bengt and Frederick from Chalmers University. Hi Cornelia, hi Martin. Hello, my name is Bengt Jakobsson. I'm a professor and group leader for the Vehicle Dynamics Group at Chalmers University of Technology in Gothenburg, Sweden. Hi, my name is Frederick Brusselius and I'm an associate professor in vehicle dynamics, also at Chalmers. Starting from the ancient invention of the wheel. So we might have something that we need to transport, like these heavy logs. We can bundle them as here in a container of some kind, but they are still very heavy to lift. Then someone invented the wheels. They, it works for transports over land, and if not too soft or too uneven ground. For our roads today, we typically put pneumatic tires on the wheels. The wheels, wheel moves like this. Longitudinal and rotational velocities, Vx and omega y, are probably what we first think, think of. But please note that there can also be lateral velocity, Vy. And generally speaking, we need to study also forces and torques. The torques come from propulsion or braking. We may identify three overall purposes. The first one is to carry the load. The four wheels of a car carry the entire load and all forces from the road go through the wheels. This makes the pneumatic tire part of the suspension system and contribute to comfortable ride. A second purpose is to convert the angular velocities and power of the propulsion and braking systems to a travel speed of the car. A third purpose is to generate the lateral forces, the direction perpendicular to the rim, when we steer the car. Also, if you think about it, there is very little lateral motion between the road and the tire when you steer. 
This makes the car easy to control. Thank you both. So, the tire has to fulfill some tasks in the overall vehicle. There are many vehicles on the road and different pneumatic rubber tires. Let's ask our colleagues Michele and Eduardo if all of these tires behave similarly. Hi Cornelia, hi Martin, I'm Michele Vignati from Politecnico di Milano. Hi, I'm Eduardo Sabbioni from Politecnico di Milano. A wide variety of different airfield rubber tires are used in automotive applications. Among others, they differ in size, shape and tread profile. The applications range from motorcycle tires to passenger cars. From commercial vehicles such as trucks and tractors to motorsport tires like Formula One. For transmission in the horizontal direction is significantly influenced by the deformation of the elements in contact with the road surface. In later units we will discuss these effects in detail. The tire in general is not a rigid structure and deforms in a range of centimeters. The deformation can be seen with the naked eye. In this video, a Formula Student tire is mounted on a test rig with drum roll. At a constant speed of 60 km per hour, the angle of the drum roll is varied by keeping the normal load constant. This produces a variation of the slip angle on the tire as it would be due to sinusoidal steering input. As it can be seen in the video, the lower area of the tire deforms due to the lateral forces acting in the contact between the tire and drum. This deformation can be seen particularly in the area of the sidewall and on how the distance between the rim and the drum changes. This behavior is similar for passenger car tires. Even if these tires have been optimized for their applications, the basic principle of power transmission are the same for all tires. The tire consists of different elements with different functions. Among the most important element is first the tire tread, which is responsible for the contact with the road. From the outside, it looks like the tire is made only of rubber. This is not the case. There are also steel belts and textile inserts, the textile carcass. Cap plies, steel belts and textile inserts increase the stiffness of the carcass and keeps the tire in shape at different internal pressures and different driving speeds. The inner liner is necessary for the air tightness. The side walls must be able to support the weight of the vehicle. These elements have very different tasks. To be able to fulfill them, a tire consists of more than just one rubber compound. For example, different rubber compounds are used in the same tire for the tire tread, cap, sidewall and inner liner. Thanks, Eduardo and Michele. Together with our colleagues from Chalmas and Politecnico Milano, we developed an online course. The next units shall give you an insight into the basics of tire mechanics. With this course, we want you to better understand how the force transmission of tires to the ground works and how this can be measured and modeled. To achieve this, we will discuss the following topics in four units in total. After this introduction, we will deal with tire kinematics, contact geometry between tire and road, and the vertical force transmission in Unit 2. In Unit 3, we will take a detailed look into the horizontal force transmission and discuss the steady state tire behavior in longitudinal, lateral and combined direction. Finally, in Unit 4, we talk about how we can measure and model tire force characteristics and what effects may occur. See you in the next unit where we will discuss how the wheel can move and that the air inside the tire is as important as the tire structure itself.